Welcome, everyone. Welcome. This is Mike with Sweet Dash. I'm going to be your host today. Today, we're going to have a little bit of a special episode of Succeed with Software. I'm here with one of our community members. We call them Sweet Mates. His name is Dave Dejewski. Uh What you're seeing here in front of you is uh, the Sweet Dash community. It's a special place where our members, our customers can gather and we can discuss different topics gathered by niches like virtual assistant or coaching. Uh, every uh, week or two is where we announce what we call fresh on live. So there's current and new features announced here. And also um, members like Dave can post uh, what Dave posted here, this very detailed and um, intelligently put together post about the way he wants to set Sweet Dash up. And he's done a great job here and, and created a mind map that we're going to look at shortly, but really spurred on a nice conversation among the members. Something that uh, when I saw it, I thought, yeah, this is a great example of what we're trying to promote here in the community and, it's, and the, a good way to educate other Sweet Mates on uh, how you can make a setup in Sweet Dash and the planning that might be involved, especially in a, in a more advanced setup that Dave's trying to put together here. So welcome, Dave. Good to have you. Thank you for uh, being on the podcast. Uh, well, thanks, Mike. It's great to yeah. be here. Yeah, it's a kind of exciting to get direct access to you. I mean, I've watched a lot of your videos and I've gotten a lot of value from the stuff that you've already put together. So getting on the show with you and being able to do this is a, is a gift. So thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. I, I'm not sure how <laughs> value, but look, I'm a little bit stubborn in the way that I really want to keep control, uh, not control, but just keep really in touch with the community and be available in the way that I want to hear uh what the people that are working boots on the ground, what challenges they're facing, how we can solve them. And you know, we pride ourselves on being a community driven software. And this is a good example of that. So um, why don't you just kind of present your, the challenges that you were having Dave and, 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 and the problems or the solutions that you're trying to achieve. And maybe we can just look at your mind map as we go through that. You'll, and you can describe that, but you know, take a look at this everyone. I mean, this is awesome. Look at this. This is kind of a real planning mind at work. But, you know, these kind of things, if you take the time, and it may not be this sophisticated, it may be the back of the na a napkin or a legal pad. But a good way to start is definitely trying to identify the flows that you need to happen and then go into even more detail and define, okay, these are the circles that I'm going to need to create. These are the pages. These are the forms. And then one by one, as you create those and string them together, you'll have a real solution. But go ahead, David, and 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 start presenting. Uh, I think it's about a you have a you're the president or uh, one of the principals at a soccer youth soccer organization. But tell us more about it. Yeah, well, I I do a few things. One, I'm you know to make money, I'm a management consultant, so I work with clients and sponsors and things to help them uh, figure out solutions to business problems. But in the context of what we're looking at here, I, I also volunteer for a 501c3 um, soccer club. And it's a, it's now a federation as we've just changed it this last year. And uh, COVID-19 gave us an opportunity to kind of stand everybody down for a year and then start looking at some of the projects that uh, we've always wanted to do, but haven't had a really a, a great chance to do it because of the, the operational tempo of things. And, you know, the fact that, you know, I'm coaching for this club and I'm also uh, trying to do the, the, the admin stuff. And, and in, in today's world, I think we're seeing a, a decrease in uh, volunteerism in some sectors. We see, you know, increase in things like food donations and things like that, but in other areas, people are really suffering or they had been suffering throughout 2020 with this, lockdown and some of the things that were happening to businesses and things. And we were no exception to that rule. So, but it gave us an opportunity to breathe a little bit and then start thinking about how can we remake ourselves in a new image. And that's what you see uh, in front of you is the, uh, the first steps at that. I should probably clarify to say that this was not really the first steps. The first time I saw a sweet dash was during the black Friday special. And I saw this product as a moldable piece of clay. So I, I knew that I had some complex business processes that I had to try to 
automate because I wasn't getting the volunteers behind the scenes to do the the management and admin type stuff anymore. And I thought that the software might give us a a boost in that area and help us automate some of the things. Plus, since we are a 501c3 and we are mission driven and not necessarily profit driven, uh, the mission is changing culture, changing the hearts and minds and, you know, bringing education to, in this case, parents and, and coaches to, to maximize their uh, ability to take advantage of that 15 year development window in kids. So, and I, and that's important, I think as a, as a relevant, um, uh, starting point because these models and this software, it, it exists only in context. I mean, it, it becomes whatever it is that you want it to be, right? So if we have a mission, we're going to form our software around the achievement of that mission. And in this case, that's exactly what we're doing. I would uh, also say that what you're seeing is not some super Dave who <laughs> stepped in and just started flowing this stuff out. I mean, I ran into a lot of walls before I got to this point. I started with the software, like I said, during the Black Friday special. I thought that I'm a reasonably intelligent person. I can probably just get in and configure it and make it work the way I wanted it to. And I failed, uh, you know, probably a half dozen to a dozen times. I I tried to do X by using A, B, and C, and I tried to do X doing, you know, using some other method. And I just wasn't getting the picture. I wasn't getting the definitions, the definitions, right. I wasn't understanding the difference between an intake form and a, you know, on demand form and you know how that all worked. And, and I had to kind of figure some of that stuff out. So I, I figured some of that stuff out by the seat of my pants on the fly. And I realized that I was really trying to cut a path through the jungle and I wasn't able to see where I was going and what progress I had made behind me or what I had tasks in front of me. And I needed a map. And that is where this thing comes from. I started well, just, I, I think ahead. you should not feel bad about that experience. I think that's a, it's somewhat of a common experience with sweet dash. And we, we tried our best to uh, simplify that there's more work to do, of course. And I think that's why we're here today, even to uh, try to, illuminate your experience and, and maybe uh, cut a path even uh, for other people. You know, yeah, the I webinar, mean, huge... we try to do that there and we try to do that in other places, but uh, re really glad that it's starting to come together for you. And in fact, a lot of the uh, five-star reviews, a lot of the really good reviews that we have in on Capterra and G2, et cetera, you'd be surprised how many of them say there is a learning curve <laughs> they qualify. Yeah. yeah, there is a learning curve. And but but once you get past that, then I really the light bulbs come on. And, and then you realize I can make this do almost anything I want it to do. And that's that's how we try to build it. So I don't want to under I don't want to understate the value of the learning curve itself, the 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 journey that we go on to try to understand uh, our own business to the level of specificity that the software forces us to understand it. Is it, it's not, it's, it's like, like creating a business plan in some ways, right? Yeah. And, and, and then How some businesses I mean, out there start and they don't really have a business plan. If you force them, sit, force them to sit down and really map it out. Yeah. They learn a lot. And then I think you, you, everyone will learn a lot by creating a map like this and really understanding what their processes are. Well, the other thing is, you know, I have this, uh, I don't even hear that Indian parable where you have all those, uh, it, it is an elephant in the middle and all there's all these blind people standing around the elephant and they all have their hands outstretched and they're feeling different parts of the elephant and they're all asked to describe what they're feeling. And, you know, the person that's feeling the leg is describing basically a tree and the person who's feeling the trunk is describing a, a snake and, you know, and, and on like that, every different part of your business, every part of that elephant is, uh, rightly described in different ways. And, you know, it, it, a document like this, what it does is it helps to clarify one perspective. And as long as we're reaching out and we're grabbing the other context, you know, people can say, you know, they can point at this, uh, this square here or this circle here and say, you know, the marketing manager, for example, I, I've, I've defined my objects in this diagram as uh, hexagons, purple hexagons that, that have anything to do with 
marketing and communications and the, in this case, the communication campaign features that are built into uh, Sweet Dash. And so my marketing communications person is going to have a big interest in when those campaigns get started, what kind of content is in those campaigns. And my marketing and communications director can now look at this and say, okay, I, I'm looking for the purple hexagons and I see you ever, all the places where I exist and I have to have input into this process. And in that way, what we've done is we've used a diagram like this to generate or to, to enable us to have a conversation with our organization and with people like you. I mean, you've got a perspective from inside that is just so deep and so rich having developed this uh, software for you and I, we had, for your listening audience, we had a, we had a brief uh, discussion yesterday where we were able to sort of, you know, I don't know, dry run, make sure we had technology working and all that kind of stuff so we could do what we have to do today. But um, my God, I learned so much from you in that conversation. And I think we were able to have an exchange of ideas simply because we had something that we could both point to and, and talk about. So that's, that's my, uh, I, I'm going to stop talking about that now and just get into oh, no. it if you're. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> let's go to the diagram. And I think we can use this as uh, to guide our conversation. And okay. what I see here, uh, just as a, a zoomed out, is that you have uh, parents, you have coaches, you have volunteers, you have donors, and some of this is still to be defined. Right. But what I see at the beginning is essentially a funnel, right? Uh, so we we want to, let's yep. start up here, but let's also understand as we start that we have the challenge of serving these different roles or um, you know, functionalities, at, however it works in your organization. Yep, for let's, sure. Let's zoom in and start at the top and, and let's get your thoughts about how this is starting, what your requirements are, and just go step by step. And we'll try to equate these these steps to uh, the functionality in Sweet Dash so that everyone knows where we are and what okay. items we are discussing. Yeah. So go okay. Um, you on your side, um, first of all, let me just I'll set this up. You, you've already explained exactly what this is. It's, it's basically, it's a funnel. It's the place where everybody starts, regardless of what your desired role in the organization is or will be. We have to get you in first. So we need to get your name, your email address, really. And that's, that's pretty much it. We've got to set some, um, we've got to set some stuff behind you to tag you properly as a prospect in this case, by putting you in the prospect circle, so that uh, we know how to treat you and what to serve you in your step one of your journey with us. And so that's what the prospect circle assignment is. Mike, if you can, right next to the start button, there, there's a little dot. And if you were to click that dot, what that'll do is open up the actual landing page that houses. So what, yep. So what that is, that's, that's our actual, uh, home page, right? And what I've done here is simply tied that button that says find your community to the intake form. So if you were to click on that, it'll take you right. It'll take you into the intake form if you, you know, if you weren't signed in and all that stuff. And then you could provide, uh, you could say, I need a new account. You could provide your name, your email. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And I think it's worth, worth pointing out that this intake form, I think you, you intentionally designed it to be low friction. Right. And this, yes. this funnel is intended to be low friction yep. to just get them started in your process. So putting a 25 question form as the very first thing to do is going to be a, a, a deal killer killer for most people. I absolutely. So, yeah. And if you, you're absolutely right. I mean, if anybody that's in the marketing business knows that every single form or every data field that you add to that first form mm -hmm. is resistance for your uh, prospects. And so you want to, I mean, if you could get away with just a simple email, that would be fine. But I have a welcome message that says, hello, so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And I want them to feel like it's been personalized for them, which is why I ask for their, for their first and last name. But um, Mike, click on the button that's right next to the intake form and it will open the notes and you'll see, yep, right there. Th those are the data fields in the notes that I've just attached that intake form. Very simple, very low friction. Get them in, send the welcome email, alert the registrar that we've got somebody coming through. And this, this serves a couple of purposes. One, you're just putting them on notice, which is what you want to do anyway for the registrar. And then two, you give the registrar something to follow up with if you have somebody that just sort of disappears off the radar down the road. So 
you know, after we start getting people in, that helps us to capture more business by going out and saying, uh, you know, the registrar has now in the part of her workflow where she can go in and um, reach back out to folks. So then we send them to a prospect start page. And that's where we start defining the relationship and assigning all the circles. And that's, that's the funnel total right there. Very simple. Uh, I think it's worth clarifying here that we have three roles for our external users. We call them sweet dash, a lead, a prospect and a client. Mm -hmm. And those carry along with them some permissions. Um, and you say a prospect circle here. So just to clarify that this could still be a, you could set this role as a client. Um, and if we were to rename this circle to make it a little uh, less uh, confusing with that nomenclature of our role, I think we would call this like a a pre sorted um, pre sorted prospect, somebody that we're going to bring into the start page, and here is where we're going to start sorting them into the circles that are more um, defined by their role, meaning coach or parent, et cetera. Yeah, for but sure. Yeah, don't, just don't want the, the listeners to get confused with the role here. This is really a circle, and the circle is going to be the definition of, or the circle is going to define which start page they're going to land on based on their circle affiliation. Right. And I actually use the prospect uh, role yeah. in, in the system to... And that's also really powerful. You could still use the role and still use a circle uh, to 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 direct them, direct to direct their experience. Yeah. And for me, it was just easier to keep them together so that, you know, I, I we do have leads, but I would say... In my in my world, in my context of the club, um, if someone has come to my web page and they've been willing to submit some of their information, they've already taken the first step towards us. And that tells me that, you know, I, I classify that as a prospect, whereas somebody who's just breezing by or somebody that we pick up and put into our system, they would probably more, more as a lead, you know, until we figure out what their intentions are. And then we would convert them to a prospect and then to a in our case, we changed, you know, I'm going to pause for one second. I'm going to say, I, I feel like I, I left a big piece out of your, for your listeners. I have spent a lot of time in the translation section of Sweet Dash and, you know, the nomenclature that is common to my culture. I had to go in and I had to change the names of all that stuff just so that it made sense. So we didn't have this kind of confusing conversation, you know, I might call it lead prospect and member as opposed to lead prospect and client, or, you know, I couldn't, I was so confused. I, I started looking at this. I'm like a staff member, you know, is my coach is a volunteer. Is that a staff member or is that a, a member or are they both? And, you know, how do I, how do I manage that? And, and I settled on a new sort of organizationally unique um, taxonomy Mm -hmm. which uh, changed the company, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call that? The company um, role, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I, I changed that to member, right? Because our family, family and or company. That's what I changed it to, family and or. Oh, you can, you've got it right there. Yeah, I'm yeah. just going to go take a look real quick and, and just, uh, show, just show the translation. I'm glad I gave you permission to get in there and we set all that up before we started talking. Because yeah, we, we set, we set yeah. all this, this up so I could access Dave's account and then and, and talk about these things in real time. So, yeah, so you'll see that this is the translation interface, which is um, sneak peek due for a little bit of a, an upgrade coming up soon. But I think if you'll type in client here. Oh, yep, you'll see it right here. Yeah, look at all the changes. The additional family company info. And then if we go to the, um, make sure I'm going to find this in the right way. The roles group, I think is where you probably found this. I yep. changed that too. Dave's renamed client to member. And this is more appropriate for his culture, as he says. So this is 100% do doable and translations don't doesn't always mean it's going to be another language it just means that you want to say it a different way and that's what's that's what dave's referring to here yeah and it, and it helps when i'm communicating or i'm trying to onboard staff 
or I'm trying to onboard members into this portal, if they see the words that they're already used to and they're, they're, the vocabulary that they're used to being called and they see things that are labeled appropriately, I mean, one of the buttons in there I, I defined just because I was having a little bit of fun, I defined it as, I said, instead of submit, I said pass or something like that because it's a soccer club, right? So it was... Uh, have a little bit of fun with it. And that way, hopefully I've got members who, as they're coming through the onboarding process, they might be smiling a little bit, you know, that's, that's, that's the objective there. It's in here somewhere. I, I, it's bringing up all the words, pass, password, but yeah, this is how, this is how this works. So let, let's get back to your, we can jump back to your uh, mind map here. Okay. So I've defined the uh, funnel for you. Um, I mean, the the initial, and I've showed you the start page that we started on. It's just a simple, in this case, it was a, I could have gone a different way. I could have embedded that form on, and I will, in fact, because I have several different web pages. So that new website that you saw is one of the, it's part of the new rollout for the new federation versus the clubs. What we've, you know, I went to the courthouse and I filed a bunch of trademark stuff and we changed the names around and that kind of thing. So it's part of the new package that's rolling out, but I could have just as easily just embedded this form on, you know, one of my sports management platforms as register here or something like that. And they would have sure. started the yeah. process. The Anywhere same. you can embed an HTML form or HTML, you would be able to do that. So in, in summary at the beginning here, so you, you have the intake form on the website, you configure that intake form to add them to a circle uh, and then send a welcome email to the prospect. You're sending your what we call portal invitation, portal access invitation yep. uh, straight away. And also an additional email that sends out to your registrar and lets them know that somebody has started this into the funnel. And then as part of the intake form, you're assigning um, the circle and then you created a portal page that you set as a start page for this circle process. Correct. And so they'll land there as soon as they set their password, they'll land there directly. Actually, now's a good time, Mike. I, the, the, um, I originally had problems with this transition step because the way, you know, I was using one of the older versions of this. And one of the things that I had done uh, when I set this up, when people submitted their name, email, and, you know, their family circle name, whatever it was, um, they would, they would get a, um, a submission success message that was automatically generated by sweet dash. And it just said submission received. And it was very generic. It was very, you know, what do I do now is the thought that kept coming to my mind. If I'm a, if I'm a new member, am I supposed to check my email? Because there's nothing there that told me I could do that. But you showed me a trick, uh, yesterday and then today again, on how to go in and configure that so that it transitions easily from that first submission into the prospect start page. Could you? Right, right. So here we're here in that intake form, and this is the intake form that Dave was referring to. And now I'm in the link slash embed settings for this form where you can get the direct link, you can get the embed code. But, and you can also configure this form completely, even down to the colors and how it presents. But one of the things you can do, it, there's a success message here. But you can also disable this success message and set a redirect. So many of our customers will redirect to, say, a success page on the website that they fully customize and give further instructions. Or we have some customers who will redirect uh, to their custom URL, their login URL. So uh, not only the email is received by the customer, but they, they understand that the next step is, uh, is going to happen here in the portal. And there's, of course, other creative ways to do that. But once you once you know about this option, I think the, there's unlimited options associated with that. Yeah, honestly, I would have been happy just getting that one tip from you. I'd have, I was <laughs> I was very excited to see that that problem was solved. Um, great, so that, that's great. a neat feature. All right. Okay. Well, so let's see. Let's let's hit the mind map and see where we are. Okay. And then, um, uh, just to just to to pass along how all this is configured. Well, I just did a little summary there, but let's look at uh, an intake form and just look at the options. So, so what Dave's done here is he set as a prospect and this is in a different account. So just, just understand that I'm just showing this for example, he set his circle right here. He scrolled down and he said, yes, I do want to send the portal access invitation immediately. And then he decided, uh, I think he is not using this, but he is, has added this extra email notification, which you can 
add or, or remove, right? So you can just say at any time you can add an additional email notification to go out to anyone you want, uh, even the person completing the form, if that, if that works in your use case. And this is the one he's sending to his registrar. That's exactly right. And that's that email. Uh, This is the send portal access invitation. And now they land on the start page. And on this start page is where you provide, I'm guessing, buttons or links to move out to other portal pages. Is that right? Exactly. Well, yeah. So what we want to do now is we want to understand what relationship that they want to have. And I'll I'll give you two business examples for this. In, In the one that we're looking at for this soccer club, this nonprofit, when someone comes to my organization, I don't know who they are. They, they're a parent. They might want to coach. They might want to uh, be a donor. They might uh, want to sponsor a team. They might just want to volunteer because they either want to get some volunteer hours. We offer what's called student service learning for kids. Uh, or they might, you know, just be an adult who hasn't wants to contribute because our mission is cool. Um, so we've got to sort them and we've got to figure out how am I going to treat each one of these people as they come through. And that's where I want them to make that. I want them to declare to me by pushing a button in this case, you know, who they are and what their role looks like in my, in my management consulting business. Uh, we might be doing capital formation. We might be doing capital structuring. We might be doing uh, establishing a fund, creating a pitch book, that kind of thing. Every single one of those roles for those types of uh, prospective clients has a whole different workflow as- associated with it. And what kept coming up in for me was any one of my clients as defined by uh, the client role um, might be more than one of those roles. So they might come in and they, but whatever they start with is usually their number one concern. So in this case, if we start, I think with the, let's take a look at the left branch there, Mike, it says onboarding a parent. Um, if you come in and you say, okay, I'm a parent, the, the forum, that prospect form has five buttons on it. And if you click, I'm a button, I'm, I'm a parent, what I had done, and Mike, I know you're going to correct me on this because you're <laughs> much better at this particular, I, I, I put a form together. I wanted the triggering actions after the form. So I wanted to be able to sign them to circles and send out the emails and do all that kind of stuff with the, with the automated workflow. But I didn't know how to trigger that or allow the, the end user, the new, new prospective member to do that. And so I created this form, which had a really simple piece of information. How many kids do you have? That's basically the whole thing on that form. That's it. There's nothing else on there. They put in a number one, two through 10, and it then takes them to the parent onboarding flow as natural course. I didn't care what they put on that form necessarily. I will use that information, of course, but I, Mike had a better way. Mike, had, <laughs> So just to clarify what's happening here is, uh, so this is the start page. Then on this pit page, Dave is embedded or has used buttons to click and go to another portal page. Right. So when they click, I'm a parent button, it takes them to a portal page. This is the portal page. And on this page is embedded what we call a CRM update form. And this is intended for people who are already in the account or already have an account. And we're going to either add or update data associated with that person. But one of the other primary functionalities, which Dave alludes to, is that you can now use that form when submitted to access all of the trigger actions uh, functionality, which includes changing circles, changing email marketing list, uh, creating project profiles, ass- assigning flows, etc. So on this page, he embedded a very simple form. How many kids do you have? And when submitted, of course, we do did get that small piece of information. But the real functionality of the form is to trigger all those actions that he needed, which are assign the flow change, take them out of the prospect circle, add them to the parent circle, add them to the convert to member circle. Um, So number of kids, yes, that's a good uh, solution, just something very small and innocuous. But what we typically recommend is maybe some sort of uh, policy language or something like, okay, well, you're here, you are interested in being a parent, and here's a a few things that we ask that you agree to, or, or any small amount of language, and then use the form uh, field would be something like, I agree, like a checkbox, I agree, submit. 
So then you get that kind of um, a formality and a little bit of policy out of the way. You also get the advantage of, of making this trigger happen and it seems really natural. And then you can move on, move them on into your funnel. So that was that was the suggestion. I think that's something that uh, Dave might implement. Oh, I, I absolutely. That was a brilliant idea. I mean, I can start the culture walk right there. I can start talking right. about, you know, I'm ready to have some fun. Agree or not agree. You know, something along. There you go. Good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and then they click it and then it's like, boom, now, now all of a sudden they're in the parent circle and the parent circle has, uh, you know, things that are associated with it. They get they get parent folders, which automatically will load in their account. And inside those folders, I can have uh, the documents that, like I have, um, oh, concussion awareness kind of stuff and mm -hmm. you know, things that you can use at home to have a better conversation with your kid and the way home from a game, those kinds of things. All that can go, uh, the schedule, maybe the annual schedule for the year. Uh, any of that kind of stuff can be loaded right up in the parent folder right away. So now, uh, you know, they're, they're good. And I, and I've also in that, in that purple hexagon again, now I've started a communication campaign with them, which starts on the day that they registered and, uh, it starts, you know, in, you know, it's the orientation. It, it gives them the intro. It gives them all of that cultural stuff that takes forever to try to, you know, pass out to people. It's just a lot to know when you're, raising kids, I guess, um, having raised a couple of them myself. Um, and then there, we're also notifying the registrar again. So now we have somebody that's come through. Now we're telling the registrar that this person's come through and they're self-identifying as a parent. And that naturally should trigger to the registrar that that's going to come with some kids. So now we're thinking, you know, we're going to have to take it to the next step, which we'll get to in a, in a minute, which is registering those kids and getting them on boarding. But after that's done, that the flow, the parent flow is triggered and that parent flow is now collecting all the necessary, uh, like the, the address of record, the emergency contact information, the COVID waiver, the talent release, and, you know, all of those things that you have to do when you register your kid to do anything these days, that's all you know, loaded up in that parent onboarding flow. And then that information, since it's already associated with the CRM contact is going to be used throughout the rest of um, their experience to, to auto populate uh, any fields that they may have to draw in later for verification, or maybe if they want to become a coach. Now I have their address of record already loaded and I've got their name and all that kind of stuff and how many kids they have. And I can pair that coach with their kids, all that stuff. So it's all in the parent onboarding flow. And then I send them from there to a start page. Great job. Yeah. So just to, to equate to the, the functionality of Sweet Dash, this uh, Dave's using, I'm sure, a shared folder. So you can create a new shared folder, assign it to a circle. And then anyone in that circle currently or in the future will have access to everything inside that folder. And remember that circles are dynamic, meaning uh, if I add someone to a circle, they immediately get access to all the things associated with that circle. And if I remove someone from the circle, they immediately lose all that access. So um, as you move people in and out of circles, their whole experience can change. And by adding uh, these parents into the parent circle, they immediately, the next time they reload the platform, will see the parent shared folder and access all those documents. Additionally, what Dave's used, doing here is he's adding them to a parent email marketing list, which he can then at any point, of course, send a mass email campaign or uh, each list ha has an autoresponder functionality. He can start a drip marketing campaign to these parents where maybe every two weeks, it just sends out a helpful email uh, in this case, um, about preparing your child or safety or any, anything you want in this case. And then anytime you make a circle change or anytime you reach one of these places where you can trigger the automations, you can change this messaging to a different list, which can be completely different messaging. And then what Dave's also done is, is, is started them in what we call a flow. And a flow is a, um, a single experience um, stepped content um, acquisition, I think is the best word for it, right? So you yeah. can have them read some language, uh, sign it, e-sign that, 
complete a form, upload some files, download some files. And this all happens in a sequenced, uh, nice interface that takes them through and, and leads them right down the path. And then he's also, because he's changed their circle to parents, he's able to assign now a new start page. So next time they log in, instead of landing here, which is where they landed when they were in the prospect circle, next time they come, they'll land now on this new start page, which com contains a completely different experience for them. Uh, more, uh, more appropriate for where they are in the funnel. Yeah. And you know, I, they never, the parents never have to enter that information again when they enter it once it just gets remembered and then it gets recalled like season after season. Yeah. So, and you can even display all that information dynamically on this start page. This start page can serve as the same page for all the parents, but by using dynamic data placeholders, you can say, hi, Mrs. Campbell, how are you? You know, and, and really reference them specifically and and all their data specifically. Yeah. And, you know, I also have, I produced a podcast for the last three years, a weekly thing of discussions with parents and coaches and stuff on the sidelines specifically around this um, mission and around cultivating, um, you know, uh, the parents, I guess, bringing them on this journey so that they can take advantage of that uh, youth development window. And and I can embed those, uh, my back library uh, into those uh, orientation campaign kind of emails so that they just, it drips it out to them over a period of time. And now I'm killing two birds with one stone because I'm also bringing in, you know, they're becoming a listener on the show and they're uh, starting to pay attention to the kinds of things that we've got going on over there. So uh, great cross-pollination uh, ability right there. Right. So, I mean, would you say, Dave, that's really, you kind of have your own, you're building blocks to build your own software to do exactly what you need it to do. Um, so you're not working inside. A, this is what we try to, to build, try to design, not working inside a very strict, this is how it works approach, but more with a flexible, here are my building blocks. Now I can put this together to become my own bespoke, unique software experience for my community or my company. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. I mean, this is this really is so powerful. I mean, if I was to do a consulting arrangement with, agreement with some other company out there, this diagram would look completely different. There'd be all new cultural things. There'd be you know different workflows. Everything would change, and Sweet Dash would be able to accommodate each of those instances. I, that's that was the selling feature for me you know, when I originally saw Sweet Dash. I was like, man, I could. There's so many different types of clients that could benefit from this. And I'm going to start benefiting myself by using it in my own organizations. And it was cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, as, as the, the action that's happening here, I think we could say fairly say, at least in generalities, is replicated. It's very similar in, in these other trees that you have and will probably be very similar when you build these out. But let's, I think let's move to identify some of the challenges that you're having now okay. and see, and just talk about some approaches for, for solving them now, or possibly even some feature identifying future features that could help uh, solve. And okay. I think some of that's down here uh, when registering a child we talked about. Okay. So you want to, okay. So in just following that same flow, uh, they land on the new member start page and now they're not locked into that role as a parent. It's not the only thing that they're ever going to do. As a matter of fact, we hope that they're going to volunteer, raise their hand. They're going to want to come out and coach and things like that. And, or they want to become a donor uh, down the road. So um, we give them the options here and this, I'll just run through. I think I put five right there. Um, and I'll start on the right because that's the simplest one. I want to donate. That just takes them over. We don't have to go there, Mike. It just takes them over to a new workflow, which orientates them as a, or orients them, excuse me, as a donor and cultivates them over time. Um, and then I want to volunteer that we actually have an arrangement with uh, the county that I live in where they help to register folks and uh, track time and things like that. So that uh, that's baked in. It's just basically a, a hyperlink. We orient them and then we would link them out to that site so they could be involved. I want a coach takes us to the next swim lane to the right, which we'll go over maybe later. Um, I want to order a new uniform or spirit wear kit. This is, this takes uh, all of our members to 
the uniform provider to the manufacturer's website. And a question that I have for you, Mike, as okay. and I and I'm I'm springing this on you last minute because I just put this in there last night as I was thinking about it. Uh, but when when people come in and they're a member now of you know they can be in Clarksburg or Damascus or Gaithersburg, and each of those communities have different uniform uh, color schemes and patches and things like that. Is there like a way that I can transfer some of that information, you know, or or direct? I might be answering my own question. Direct them uh, to the different websites based on the option that they choose. So, you know, they they want to they they self identify with the Clarksburg community and they want a new uniform. When they push that button, I want that inf- I want them to be directed to the Damascus ordering page, not the one for, I mean, excuse me, the Clarksburg ordering page, not the one for Damascus or Clarksburg or whatever, or or whatever the other towns are. I'm getting tongue tied around this, but yeah, you get the idea. I'm trying to direct them to the one so they don't get confused. I want them to go to the website that I want them to go to based on their selections. Uh, Just on the fly, what I think somewhere up here is that we should try to sort them into a circle uh, when you said Damascus, and I'll just use that as an example. Right. Uh, a Damascus circle. And then if we are able to achieve that, on this start page, one of the functionalities we have is that you are able to show or hide entire rows even of content based on a circle circle affiliation. So what it means is you can have an entire section of this start page content that's only going to show to people in the Damascus circle. Okay, and then in that way, you can define the, the content there and then show a button only or show a, defi- a a button that's coded for that particular location. And then what you'll end up with, I don't know how many of these you have, but say you have 10, you'll end up with 10 rows of content, each one individually coded to show to that specific circle. And in that way, you can show specific information to people from in that Damascus circle, including the button they click to go out and order uniforms. So I just heard you tell me I only have to make one page instead of 10. And I love that. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, the, and then the last one there is the one where I'm, I'm really running into trouble on, and that's, I want to register a child. So the way this works mm-hmm. is I've assigned, or the, the family member has, it's, it's mom or it's dad. So mom or dad comes in or, or guardian, they come in and they register themselves first and they go through this flow and they identify with the community and all that. And they tell me how many kids they have and they want to register some number of kids. So there's a one to many relationship here. And those, the kids that get registered, I don't necessarily need to communicate with them. um, But I have to keep track of their height, their weight, their age, their grade, uh, what team assignments they've been given, things like that. I've got to track that information, that metadata about each one of those kids, how do I go about now and create sort of a one-to-many or allow that mom or dad to do two things? One is register a child or two, uh, add a family member, because if dad registers, then mom has to get the emails too, because they're all sharing carpooling or, you know, ride stuff that, you know, so they, they have to be able to add uh, email addresses like I guess we could just add another form and say secondary or tertiary email, but I don't know if that's going to send to all of them. Help, help me understand how we might handle that one-to-many kind of relationship. Well, it, it, it's difficult in our current architecture. So uh, just to define how you're actually doing this, each of these parents, each of these, these people that come in is in our world a client. Okay, So they're on the external side of our, our structure. And if you wanted to add more actual users, they would be on the client side too. So if you really want to register a new user, you're essentially asking, saying to Sweet Dash, I would like my client to be able to register a client, which I think in most traditional business relationships, we would right. not, not think would work, right? That's right. not something that people do. Um, now, there could be a couple of ways we could approach this. And maybe in the future, we may have a situation where we could code in and say, okay, I'm a, I'm a client. I work at this company. And I think we should say here that you, what one thing you have done, which is really smart. And I don't want to introduce any confusion here, but you've taken our, what our company, our company object 
and you've renamed that and reused that as a family. Mm -hmm. So uh, the mom and the dad both have individual users, uh, which are clients, but you have them inside a company, which in your world is a family. Mm -hmm. So now they have a, a shared association and can we can message to them and, and kind of group them in the way that same way that we do um, clients in, that two or three users that work at the same company. Mm -hmm. But what, what we need to do here and what we may do in the future is allow a client who works at a company to, um, to register or send at least a registration invitation to a colleague who also works at that same company. Because we're not really crossing any sort of privacy lines at that point. He just says, right. hey, I work at the company. I would really like my colleague to also have access to your, to your portal, and I'm going to add them here. So maybe there's a mechanism like that in the future. And uh, you know, again, I want to qualify saying that's not something we have now. But the other way that, that, that you may be able to solve this is using custom fields uh, for, this, for the, the parent uh, or one or more of the parents. Or I'm sorry, yeah, we talked about uh, company custom fields would be a good fit here hmm. because you are using the company as the family. So in this case, now we're, we're talking about family custom fields. And um, in your case, the way to do this would be to create um, child number one name, child number one, and what are the other examples you said or the, the data yeah, points you need to all track. the demographic information, the age, height, weight, all that stuff. Yeah. So let's say there's 10 of those. You're going to say child number one X, child number one Y, and you're going to list, you're going to create all these custom fields and then child number two, child number three. And luckily, you know, we're, we're limited by biology, how many ways we need to, we can go, <laughs> yeah. how many levels we need to go there. Right. But, and it is a little bit of work for sure. But um, in that sense though, we, then you can use those company dynamic data placeholders. And then on something like this member start page, you could start to even display and, and build a layout that would work nicely to display all the names of all the children and, um, and their statistics and, and associated data. That so I put a box down at the bottom there. I'm toying around with the idea of using the work order functionality so that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we capture the information either in an on-demand flow or, uh, as you said, up in the original onboarding flow. Well, that's a lot of information uh, to put in. Um, is there a way that I can then, like, trigger a bunch of actions throughout my administration staff for each child that a parent wants to register, you know, by like making each registration action, a work order action. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It kind of does. I think what you would end up with is a at least in the current, the current availability of uh, features, you would end up with some manual work on the other side, but it may be worth it. Maybe something that can happen if you already have a registrar, you could have the work request form, which is customizable, and you can create custom fields for that. You could have uh, eat the parent submit a work request um, and, of course, rename it using translation, as you have already done, and submit that data. And then your registrar would take that and, and put that into the proper data fields. Mm, yeah, see, I like the idea of being able to capture the information on those custom fields and have it automatically like can That'd i capture great. crm yeah. or company fields in the work order process interesting yeah uh, of course that would be something that's interesting um what might be even be there's ways of course there's ways to to solve this uh but it's not something that we have currently i can't think of a a perfect solution to this at this so point. this for your listeners this is this is why it's uh <laughs> listed as off the map because we're, it's a problem that I'm, I'm actively trying to, to work on. And thanks, you know, thank goodness, Mike has been open to having this discussion with me, but. Um, well, and I think a lot of the members of our community can, can testify that, and especially those that uh, attend the webinar on a regular basis can testify that we always run it. We not always, but often will run into these little wrinkles or little structural um, which is good because you're actively still embracing that and I'm, growing. I'm absorbing these. We're listening and, mm -hmm. and, and they can definitely testify that thing that 
we've, we provide solutions on a regular basis and in pretty short order. Once we can identify the need, identify a worker or, or a solution that fits into our current architecture and it, we'll spec it, we'll, we'll get it ready for development and, and often two or three weeks, four weeks later, there it is on production. So uh, these are things that we really like to do. We really like to identify these things. So certainly not something that I run away from, run towards this and, and look at it and say, how can we fix this? Yeah, that's, that's not, that doesn't happen in every organization, Mike. So again, on behalf of the rest of the membership of Sweet Dash community, thank you for being that kind of responsive because uh, I mean, we've we all had the experience trying to chase somebody down and help us on something and it just, they're just not there, but look at us now. We're here. <laughs> I only posted my first orientation, uh, like welcome. I didn't even know you had that community site until very recently. And I posted on there thinking, oh, I'm just going to throw it away. Cause nobody's ever going to read this anyway. And I was surprised. Uh, yeah, yeah. So good. But we're, right, we're trying wanna... to, to build a community there, not just a place where uh, myself or our other team, team members are, are active responding we're really trying to build a community of leaders and of of teachers and and guides who are using the software successfully and are are happy and excited to help someone else uh along their journey as well so okay where do you want to go from here Mike? To see that yeah that's interesting so let's i think let's talk about the other side of this one interesting area was the I think here where you were triggering a project profile and you talked about as I was in our previous conversation, I was trying to clarify some of this, but you had a recurring need for project profiles. Yes. Maybe, maybe hit on that and we can discuss some solutions there. Okay. All right. So just so that everybody has context, starting at the top of that uh, swim lane, we've, we've, you know, taken in their basic information, they've self-identified as a coach, or they've self-identified as a parent, gone through the swim lane on the left, and then they have the I want a coach button on the right. It takes them to the same place. They get a coaching introduction form. Um, I want to tag them first as they're not a coach yet. They have to go through a screening process, and that's what you're seeing here. They, If they come directly to us, they're converted to a member. If they're already a member, they just stay that way. We give them a new uh, circle uh, identification, which is now prospective coaches. And that's identified in yellow on this chart. Um, we also take them out of the prospect circle if they're not already out of it, because we know who they are. And we want them to be in the all volunteer group because we want them to get messaging later on down the road for, for all of our volunteers, like, you know, success stories or newsletters, things like that. We've got three notifications happening on this workflow. So we're alerting the registrar. We also have to bring in the risk manager now who's going to be making sure that our coaches are safe to be paired up with our kids. And we have our director of coaching who's going to be evaluating uh, coaching skill and coaching culture. We, In our culture, we do not, uh, we, we try to weed out the, the screamers, the one that, you know, yell at the kids to wake up out there and that kind of stuff. We don't, we want a different culture. So we're, we're screening them. That's what the director of coaching is going to help with. So we also assign some folders. We've got coaching folders now, and that has like the coaches manual uh, coaching guide. And then we have a welcome and orientation campaign. We have to teach them, you know, how to run your first parent meeting and we have to teach them what is age appropriate and where to stand and when to take off your sunglasses and all that kind of stuff. So that's in this sort of orientation campaign here, which we've getting started, but we, we also need um, credentials and the credentialing profile is something that has timers on it. So for example, background registrations in this case are conducted every year, 12 months, whether they need it or not, right? So every 12 months, we run them through a new background investigation. We actually have a renewal in six months, um, but we want to make sure that they have verified that their information is still correct. They're still living in the same address and all that kind of stuff. Um, very important to get them registered so we know where to find them and to get their background investigation started with at least two weeks left before the actual season starts so they can be processed. And then if they don't, then we want to start a reminder campaign and as soon as they verify that they have completed 
<clears throat> their registration in this case or the background investigation, excuse me. Um, we also want to trigger a stop reminder campaign or, or a stop the campaign uh, action so that they're not continuing to get these harassment emails for not having finished. That's actually not the best example. The next one down is better. Youth protection has to be renewed every 24 months. Mm -hmm. uh, concussion has to be renewed every 12 months. And then because we're in a post COVID world and uh, studies through journal American medicine have talked about, you know, kids having potential lingering effects of the cardiac kind of events um, after they've had even asymptomatic COVID, then we want our coaches to be prepared with the sudden cardiac death training, which is normal for uh, all athletic coaches but normally not until much later in their career. So we're adding it in here. We're making sure that they're tagged with trained, they're tagged with concussion trained, they're tagged with youth protection trained. And when they're all done and they have all that stuff, then we ask the basic question, are all the certifications orientation stuff done? And that's what that uh, diamond is there in the middle next to the green circle. And if it is done, then we pull them out of the perspective coaches circle. We're actually going to add them it's not reflected on the map yet. I just haven't gotten that far, but we're going to add them to the appropriate, um, you know, all coaches circle, or maybe they're a community coach or a premier coach or an academy coach. We want to tag them appropriately so they get the right information down the road. And then we also want to sort them, um, which you see in the reflection there, the new coach flow. And then the next question down, which coaching stage, depending on what age group they're teaching, there's different ways to manage those kids. And we want all stage one coaches, <clears throat> for example, to have the stage one information uh, and stage two and things like that. So we're assigning circles again. It's just, it's a sorting function here. We're walking them through this, this process that you're looking at here takes, I can't tell you oh, how many number of emails and phone calls and Oh, to do it manually. This is a nightmare. I mean, it just goes on forever because you're constantly chasing. I did the math one time on how many emails I had to send out to get somebody to make, take one action. And the, the answer was 12. I had to send 12 emails for every one response that I got. And considering that I'm one guy and there are potentially thousands of members and dozens of staff members, for me to send 12 out for every single task that has to be done, it's just impossible as a, as a club president. So... This process uh, hopefully saves our sanity um, and just kind of takes care of it. And it, it, it does the triggering so that, and Mike, I'm going to ask you this question because to me, reporting is very important. I, I need to be able to go back into the system and verify that uh, how many people I have and what stages and that kind of thing. What kind of reporting capabilities do I have where I can go in and say, let's pull all the youth protection trained but not done coaches or something along those lines. That's something we're working towards um, right now. The Q3 and Q2 are, are set aside for uh, building the baselines for that, for things like that. We have reporting to build along across all of our tools really. And so the difficulty is immense and in that's in that way, but definitely looking at these things uh, as far as, you know, how to build reports around, okay, I, I need everybody that's in one circle, but not in this other circle and, and, and re return that. So, uh, yeah, so at this like, point, the, the best answer I could say would, you can export all of your contacts mm -hmm. to a CSV. And uh, with that CSV, I think you can do a, a lot of slicing and dicing uh, based on, on that. But that was actually my plan was to do exactly that because I not only have to get, I have to get the kids data right. and uh, I have to get all that into our sports management system. So it creates the team pages and assigns them to coaches and tracks the scores and all that kind of stuff that happens during games. So I have to do an export function anyway, if you're telling me that, you know, I mean, anybody that you handle that data will be very, very unique. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it's almost more flexible in that way, but um, but you're right. There, there's a reporting. There's, there's a need for more reporting in the platform, and we're, we're aware of that, and it's on our roadmap for in, in our planning. So yes, I didn't, that's coming. I didn't mean to uh, bring something up to a, point out here. Yeah. Just quickly is, is that here you're removing them from prospective coaches, and you're, and you're probably going to add them to a general coaches circle. Yes. But also, let's all remember that 
each contact can be in multiple circles and you can use those multiple circles to uh, define their experience even on a more granular level. So in this case, right, you want to add them to a general cir- coach's circle, yep. but also maybe to a stage one circle. Yep. And then as and they move circle. through some, and then maybe later they'll be in a concussion trained circle. So there's three circles and then they graduate. You move them from stage one to stage two. So now they're in stage two general circles and concussion trained. Uh, maybe you have a concussion expired circle. So you're constantly using circles to move people yeah. into different, uh, inside different experiences and adjust their experience based on that circle. And that circle becomes your, uh, your switch, your target to adjust that experience. Yep. That's exactly right. Okay. So here though, I think it was, it is interesting how you're using what we call a project profile. And let me just bring that up on the on the screen here, if I can. Quickly, I have a project profile open in another account, and then I'll help us a little bit. So a project profile is essentially a predefined project. All the metadata and uh, assignments, et cetera, are all predefined, and it's just waiting to be triggered. So it's meant to be used in an automation. You'll see that anywhere that you're researching or looking at the documentation about a project profile. And that's the reason that we provide these dynamic placeholders, et cetera, and things like relative completion dates, because it's all dependent on when this project gets generated. Um, you can even use a project or what we call a based on date, which you'll see um, in the task generation, the based on date. So you can even use an, a future event and base your and have your project generate and the task be generated relevant, relative to the based on date. So there's a lot of flexibility here, but uh, what we're going to talk about here in relation to Dave's use case is these, uh, the set of scheduling options. So let's go back and look at your, at your mind map, and then we'll come back and talk about what additional options I think we would really need here to achieve your goal and, and probably something we will slate for development in the short term. Let's look at it and yep. see. Yep. So I th- maybe we can use the concussion training as an example. Yeah. So the way I have this thing set up now is that uh, what I want them to do is to trigger one project profile first, which it gives them, the hyperlinks they need to get the certification done or the training done. And then it, it has a completion or, or an estimated um, either a completion date or uh, what do you call it? Expiration date for the certificate that they get back. Right. In some cases I want to set that expiration date within the system. So I actually want to have another field that I can uh, set behind the scenes that maybe the the person that, is completing the project profile doesn't necessarily see, but the fact that they took the action to submit a, let's say a check mark or something to say that yes, that it's done or that they put in a certification date that automatically calculates out either 12 months or in this case, probably 11 months because we want to give them at least a month to get it done or 23 months in the case of youth protection training so that we want to trigger Again, we don't want them to see it for those 23 months or the 11 months, but in the 11 month mark, we want them to automatically see a new project profile assigned to them that says, okay, now it's time to renew. Right. And we just keep repeating that process until the person is no longer a member. Yeah, be, this, this would be really great if, to achieve this. So here you're using this trigger to generate, to, for, to trigger this project profile to generate a project, which is assigned to the user, in this case, the coach. And that project is you build that or predefine that to have these tasks and that's immediately assigned to them, available to them. They can go in, they can see their task. Those tasks can have be full of description and instruction. And then when they complete them, they're going to click complete. Um, You're going to, as part of this, you're going to want to uh, grab an expiration date in some custom field. And then based on that expiration date, you want to essentially add 11 months or 12 months and then generate another project profile that, that gets them on the path to complete this training again in 11 months. Right. And the day I would add the one more feature that we talked about last night, which is, you know, 
the verification or authorization piece. If the risk manager says that it's done, then I'm inclined to believe that than somebody self-reporting that right. I did something. So the, I think we talked last night about baking in a new uh, sort of an approval step in there that the new custom field would key off of that approval as opposed to keying off of the initial submission. Yeah. Right. And that, that's something that, that we want to try to target. But let's look in the sense of the recurring options that are available to you. So we talked about the recurring options. You can use a start on date and then or and say every one month, which that won't work for you necessarily because it's based on the, the date that they started of the first project, for example, or the date that they that you set here. And but you want to base it on the the acquisition date of the of the certificate so that you know it's going to expire in 11 months or 12 months so then we looked at the possibility of using a specific date but unfortunately that won't work either because that's a specific date and time including a year then this option though is a powerful option because we can trigger this project profile to go off based on the value of a custom field, which of course is different for every single contact, the value is. So in this case, I have in this account tax portal last updated, but in your case, you could call it concussion certificate expired, right? And so yeah, on I mean, this, uh, this project profile would now generate on the, or no, let's say concussion certificate acquired, I think is the right way to maybe do this. Yeah, either way. So in this case, we would say it would generate on the acquisition date, but that's still not what we want. So what we talked about possibly coding here would be some math, right? So now let's get the date plus 11 months. And that's when it'll happen or start every 11 months or every 12 months from this date or something like that. Um, would be a solution here for you. So, yeah, your use case is a little bit outside of what we have the capability for now, but really cool idea to um, to make. I'll that go work. you one better because you just triggered a, uh, an idea. Since we're just sort of spitballing mm -hmm. some of this stuff, yeah, we're just ripping here. Yeah. Um, if I were to have a form that, let's say, my uh, director of coaching or somebody like that were to fill out that would enter start and stop dates for each of the seasons and lay out sort of an annual calendar. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my, my question now is would those uh, variables be available to all of my clients inside the portal? Like, was there, is there like a general, um, because I can set flags all day. We can set up, you know, these uh, placeholder fields, data fields inside the system and then just fill them with the dates that we think are important. Like I want to have everybody trained and certified at least three weeks before the season actually starts. And so mm -hmm. where do I define where the season starts in a system like this or where the... Well, you can make a custom field, yep. uh, a contact custom field. Let's look at that really quickly, and then you can you can hide that from everybody in the system. Essentially, it won't it won't show up in their list, or uh, it won't show up in placeholders. So when you say hide placeholder, yep. that'll hide all the placeholders. So this is sort of a hidden data field that you're keying off of. Um, and then what you can do is, I think I understand your what, where you're going with this, is you can use our bulk edit feature to set the date for every single. Uh, contact all in one go. So use bulk edit, and yep. then you can say update all circles or update all contacts. And what this update all, what that does, which is really powerful, it's essentially going not to update all the contacts at the, that moment in time, but it will update in the future as well, um, depending on the use case here. But then now you can identify your custom field set the start date of the season of 2021. Maybe the custom field is called 2021 season or 2022 season start date. And you can use those in your automations. Uh, maybe maybe that project profile that we just discussed as a triggering mechanism. That is brilliant. Yes. So, and you'll be able to just change that for all people all the time, you know, all people all at once. Or circles. And yep. Absolutely. There, that's, there you go. that's brilliant. I think that can work. Yeah. So let's okay. go back to your, and so with a little, a few changes, and I think some generally useful changes, which of course 
makes it uh, easier for us to make our decision about whether to develop it or not. But these are definitely generally useful changes. We can get this this whole section here working for you. Uh, and even these um, recurring, sort of complex recurring mechanisms that recur based on some date that is dynamic, that changes, that's moving around. But I think it can happen. I think it can happen, Dave. And I think maybe one thing we should even start to think about is 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 a follow-up episode in the future to look at how this is evolving for you and, and what roads and paths you've taken based on some of these ideas. And I'm not sure would love to keep with you and even keep all the the listeners and the community and all the sweet mates uh, comprised of where you're heading, how it's going, what the success is and, and where you're still having challenges. And maybe we can just take this journey with you. Yeah. I'm generally happy to help out if it seems like it's something of value for your audience. Um, I have in, in mind, like once this is done, I have several other chunks of modules that I've got to get through and get diagrammed out like the billings. For example, I've got to, you know, map out the different membership plans that we have and, uh, how we do the math to figure out um, if, if you, if you're telling me, which I think you just did is that you have the ability to do math inside of custom fields. That feature alone is a game changer. That's something we're targeting. Yes. In, in the, in the, probably in you know, definitely this year in, in the latter half of this year, where you'll be able to actually take dynamic placeholders and um, put them in math equations for things like charts, I mean, you know, we have a chart, we have chart blocks and portal pages. So yes, you can return a simple value, but what if you could um, return the result of an equation based on values that are entered by your your customers or clients? Then you could really start to do some fancy. Listen, I'll pose this to you. What about a loyalty program? I'm actually thinking. I want to reward my parents and I want to reward my coaches for the time that they've spent doing what they do. And if they're a member of our organization that I, you know, at the one year anniversary, I want to be able to know when that happens. I want to be able to send a notification that I have these number of people that have, you know, come up or, or even just do it automatically behind the scenes where we send out a, a coupon code or a, a discount or something like that. You're, you're, you're right in line with some of our thinking. Some of, we're in sort of some pre pre planning for, some gamification features and badges, badging features that go right along with what you're saying. Wow. Um, you know, so if they complete this step, add a hundred points, you know, or whatever the denomination is that, that we, that we settle on or go with, but some, you know, and when, when that you reach X number of points, then do this. So present them a, a form that says, choose your reward or something and let them choose it. And, mm -hmm. You know, and then on the back end, we got to figure out how to do the notifications and the fulfillment of those um, of those gifts. But the the potential here is it it's yeah, it that would be that would be really neat, and and especially for those who are are building something like a membership site yep. or some complex um, restricted access or community type setup, that kind of thing would be really neat. Yep. So, just looking at all this in in of the zoom out mode, right? I mean, I think what a lot of people might see is, wow, this is a lot of work, but, I, but I'd just like to maybe have you comment on, and you, you have touched on it a little bit, you know, so things of value don't come cheaply. Right. And, and, and some people will use a simple setup. Some people need more complex, but I think you have illustrated already and talked about a little bit, the amount of work, that you're going to be able to save on this automation when this is complete, when this is working, when you have layered it on, layered it, built it, tweaked it. Now it's working just like you need it to. And uh, I mean, how much work can that save you? I mean, that's hours and hours. I mean, it, it can save your, look, I, I'll go back to the original story. Uh, when you're, I'm an avid hiker. I, I do backpacking for weeks on end. I'll go out and purify my own water and, you know, spend, you know, a few weeks in a tent in the mountain somewhere. And if you don't, if you don't have a map of 
what your organization is about, you're going to get lost. And how much time, energy, and are you going to spend, as I did with this product, I spent, like I said, I started probably half dozen to a dozen times trying to figure this thing out. And it wasn't necessarily the software so much as what it, what do I really want to do with this software? And once I started getting clear on that, then I can start mapping those things that I want to do with the elements inside the software that will do it. And it would, it's just so much easier to flow out when you understand what came before and what's coming after and what your target at the, at the end of the day is going to look like. Uh, plus, from my perspective, I can take these diagrams and I can just tuck them away in the in the board notes and stuff. And when I leave, uh, which as an elected person, I have, you know, a limited number of terms that I can serve when I'm gone, I can hand this off to the next person and actually have a succession plan that makes sense uh, for the organization. So, yeah, I'm I'm look as a management consultant, this is I totally understand how much work goes into creating some of this stuff and how much people are willing to pay uh, to have that kind of work done. It's incredibly, incredibly valuable to get this kind of stuff done. And then once you have this, then you can go into the needs list uh, mode where you can say, OK, I know that I'm going to need a prospect circle. I know that I'm going to need a, a start page. I know that I'm going to need a list, an email marketing list here. I know I'm going to leave a shared folder there. And then you can go and, and start building your components and, you know, maybe start with, here's an example. You start with the circles. Now let's build out all my circles. I know what they are. Here's the description. Then I'm going to go build out all my marketing lists and then build out all those other things. And then when it comes time to create that first intake form, right, where all those questions are asked, then you have answers to everything instead of an empty drop down menu. And you say, well, okay, now I have to go make that. Uh, planning ahead really will make your process much smoother as you. You did a needs list for me just before we started this call where you'd like use some kind of something simple like a sticky software or something. Just wrote down here's the circles that I need. Here's the. Right. And how much easier was that? We we're, were talking about. So, yeah. So I need circle X and circle Y and just make your list, then go into the software. Now you do this because you're a software developer and this is the way you think anyways. But you know, guys like me, we if I don't have a visual in front of me uh, to get it started, and once I get Perfect. that started, uh, that's incredibly valuable. But um, yeah, anyway. Well, you've done a great job here and uh, I think you really deserve to pat yourself on the back and... Uh, I think you you make made a great start. You know, Why don't we I have the party you'll, once you'll, it's, you'll, you'll get once to it's the done? End. And and I want to I want to keep an eye on this and and help you along any way we can. Okay, thank you, Mike. Yeah. Well, Dave, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Uh, I hope this is helpful for a lot of people out there to see this how this thought process starts, how it can be broken down into uh, these components and then identify the elements that are going to be needed to make it successful. And, you know, what we're looking at here is a, a pretty complex uh, setup. Many of you don't need that. Many of you need something a little simpler. So for some of you, you know, you'll take this node here and you'll just attach something like this node here and you're done. And that's your, that's what you need for others. You'll have one, one need here and another need here, and, and they'll be slightly different, but not very different. So on, somewhere on the scale of complexity, everybody is, is finding themselves. But in general, I think that you'll see that with some planning, you can, you can get a handle on what you need and start to move forward with it. Uh, don't be afraid to jump into the community and ask for help and, and, and submit, you know, this, uh, you just just say here's what i'm trying to do here's what i have in mind here's what i'm thought about but maybe somebody's done it differently and and as dave was so maybe you'll be surprised by the the response but uh we're happy to have you and dave thanks again for your for your uh if you want to shout out to anybody or talk about your your organization and no, no, I don't have to do any of that um i i'll just i'll just thank you because uh the fact that you're so accessible um, and, and the community, some of the, the responses, I don't know if you were able to show some of that, but, you know, guys like Jeff Kaufman, I would say, 
you know, he did some thinking about it. He, he actually went out and he approached the problem a little bit differently by going out and looking at, at the, the way that Zapier looks at the software. And that helped him to clarify, uh, what's going on. And I, and that's the kind of really useful feedback. Um, I mean, not to diminish this kind of conversation, my God, this is, uh, this is unprecedented for me to be on the phone with a guy who's actually creating the software and helping me walk through how I'm going to use it. I mean, that's what right. a privilege to be here for me. But this, but this is accessible to everyone, right? It, it's, it's accessible to everybody. I mean, Jeff just jumped in there. It looks like three days ago from when we're recording and, um, and he was just genuinely trying to be helpful. And, you know, I, I definitely appreciate people like that, uh, in the, in this community and, and, and people like you. So thank you to you and everybody else who's uh, listening. From, from me. Thanks for, and to everyone who is jumping in here and helping. And, uh, thanks again, David, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and maybe we'll see, uh, we'll have you again and get a look at your updated onboarding mind map and, and maybe, um, get some, get a look at how your system has been working and, and get some updates. But if awesome. not, best of luck. Uh, and thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Mike. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll call that a wrap. Hope to see you in our weekly webinars and uh, in the community. So thanks again. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.